This is James 2, verse 14. What shall it profit, my brethren, if a man say he has faith but has not works? Will faith be able to save him? It says we're saved by faith, but then he's saying faith alone is not enough. If a brother or sister be naked and want daily food, that is lack daily food, and one of you say to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, yet give them not those things that are necessary for the body, what use is that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give it in, in modern English. What use is that? And St. Caesarius of Arles, little city in the south of France, on the coast in the south of France, Vincent van Gogh lived there for one year from 1888 to 1889, and he produced like 300 paintings and drawings when he was there. Arles, St. Caesarius of Arles, um, My just, uh, Christ says, my justice can give you nothing except what your works deserve. Why might that be? Why, why might saint, this saint say that, that Christ says, my justice can give you nothing but what your works deserve? Why would Christ limit what he gives to us to what our works have, have uh, deserved. And by the way, he always gives us more than we desire or deserve or imagine. But, but uh, that said, if we're unworthy of gifts, he may not give more gifts. Why would that be? If he's all loving, why would he pull back? Why would he stop? Stop giving. Can you think of any reasons? Are we not ready? Not ready for them? Kind of like you said, Adam and Eve weren't uh, okay uh, tested yet. Yes. So what what would happen then if we got something we weren't ready for? What would happen to our soul? Could get complacent. complacent okay. Okay. We could get so honest. complacent we don't we're not grateful. We just and and then wouldn't that be committing a sin? So in other words, he, 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 uh, St. James says, God tempts no man. God doesn't lead us into temptation. So, um, so yeah, he's not going to give us a gift that's going to hurt us. Uh, do you give the gift of a sharp pocket knife to a two-year-old for their birthday? Why not? Because they could hurt themselves with it, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I think I've made the case. So, uh, it's been made. So, um, <clears throat> Saint Leo of Rome, he called the Saint Leo the Great. Um, but no charges will be brought up against a sinner uh, when where works of compassion have been found acknowledging the Creator. It's an interesting thought. Okay. Um, but anyway, in other words, if somebody's suffering and we say, oh, God bless you, and don't do anything to help them, what kind of a prayer is that? And what kind of a faith is, is that? We show that we really don't Get it. Verse 17. So faith also, if it have not works, is dead in itself. Faith without works is dead. Um, and here is what St. Hilary of Arles, another saint of Arles. This is what St. Hilary of Arles says um, well let me let me do it in sort of a graph form so um, 
let's say uh, I'm going to put gives life to, okay? Works, good deeds, you could call it good deeds. Give life to faith. Okay, are you following? Works give life to, they fill it out, they, they deepen it, I guess. Um, faith, he says, gives life to the soul, and the soul gives life to the body. Okay. But one of the uh, fathers in here somewhere in these commentaries says, well, then what gives life to something else is usually considered higher. Like, like if, if the soul gives life to the body, that makes the soul higher than the body, uh, higher ranking, if you will, than the body. Well, then why aren't works of higher rank than faith? If they give life to faith. And, uh, and one of the fathers notes that actually the only thing is, where does the desire to do the works come from? Faith. <laughs> so faith sets the condition to start to do the, the works, and then the works um, perfect the faith. But it is sort of a full circle. Okay. All right. <clears throat> But what about faith, just only faith, no good deeds, only faith? You know, some Protestants think that this is enough to be saved, right? But what does St. James say about that? But some man will say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my works, by, by works, my faith. Okay, he says, thou believest that there is one God. Like I said, I was going to do modern English. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Satan believes in God. Satan believes there is just one God. Is Satan saved? No. Nope. But do you want to know, vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works, offering up Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith cooperated with his works, worked together with his works? I guess. And by works, faith was made perfect? You know, the, 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 the amazing thing about Abraham being willing to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. He had been told that all nations of the earth would be blessed in Isaac. In other words, Isaac uh, was going to produce you know, a vast um, legacy on this earth. But if he was going to kill him, how could that even be? He must have had, say, the fathers that I was reading on this, he must have had faith that God could also raise him from the dead. He must have had that faith. Because he'd received the promise and he believed the promise. And then he was still willing to uh, sacrifice just because God said so. Um, and of course, we know it. He um, he was stopped at the last minute, and it was enough that he was willing to follow God wherever God would lead him. Okay. Oh, do you see that by works a man is made righteous, and not by faith only? 
Do you see why Martin Luther wanted to get rid of this book of scripture? He called it, he called it a letter of straw, and he wanted to get it taken out of the New Testament. Fortunately, other saner minds prevailed. <clears throat> oh, and the same way Rahab the harlot, wasn't she justified by works receiving the messengers and sending them out another way? Do you know who what this is talking about? Jericho. Yep. Yeah. So she was in Jericho. She was a prostitute, yes. But then when God's servants came along and, and wanted to take the city, because God commanded them to take the city, she helped them. And she put her own life on the line to do so. She got him in, she, she snuck him in, and she snuck him out. And I've never read this anywhere else, but St. Pacomius the Great in what the fourth, fifth, I mean, the fifth, the fifth, the St. Pacomius, the fifth century. Um, maybe in, very, very end of fourth, beginning of fifth century. He calls her a saint for what she did. He says, yeah, she was a harlot, but she, she was also a saint. Wasn't well, she a traitor to her own people too? Uh, yeah, because God was on the other, uh, God, she was helping God's servants, not her own ethnic group. And they basically aided them in their extermination, because all the Je people of Jericho were oh, yeah. killed, right? Yes, command. So, she counted by whether people were with God, rather than if people were of her own tribe. And that is something remarkable, actually. We would do well to learn a lesson from her on, 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 on that. And so would everybody else in the world. Okay, now we're going to dash on to chapter 3.